Hey, what's up? Melda here. So I want to go over how I use this technique with fields and uh, vertex maps on how I created this quick animation and help me like create this shader. So it's just a quick test. But um, how I use the technique and then also how I use the, the vertex map technique I'm going to show in this video to like pump out the detail in like as you see in the shader of this dinosaur thing here and how, how I like Free and it has some different uh, like colors here in the green and the blue and and some red and so I'm just gonna all go over like the basics in Cinema 40 here. So let's open up this fucker. Okay, I'm just gonna go over like the basics. Um, so I'm not gonna show you how to create these uh, sh crazy shaders. I, I think it's uh, more valuable to like get the basics of how this works and how maybe get a small idea of how fields work and then how you can use the vertex maps um, in in your redshift shader and and animate them even and all of that. So let's just start here. I have a, a sphere and um, let's just start by making this editable and then. Uh, control A, so select all your vertices, and then we can go up to select, set vertex weight, and make sure to set this to zero. Just for now, anyway. Okay, so right off the bat, I just want to show you like uh, a small technique here that w you can use. I'm not going to use it uh, like further in this video, but it's a it's a fun way to like get some quick animation for your vertex map. So if you paint around here. Just this. This could be anywhere. We could also like do one down here, for example. And then if we go up to a vertex vertex map, we could press use fields. And in the fields tab, we get all these new features. So if we press the freeze one here, we could go into grow. And as you can see, something is already happening. So down in our timeline here, if we press play, it's gonna grow. So it's going really fast. So if we set this to maybe like twenty five. Then we will get like a different result already. So as you can see, you can get some really cool results, like super automatic and without doing like that much work. So I'm not going to use this now. So instead, I'm just going to press clear, and this is going to clear out, and then take this to none again. Instead, what I'm going to use in here is a linear field. So in here we have all these field options like a fall off option you could call some of them so the linear field is going to add uh, in our layer here so let's just this is um yeah this is the linear field and it looks like what we used to from some of our deformers uh, from the fall offs so let's just make this a bit smaller so we get like a tighter fall off so as you can see already here we have so much more control and we can control our, our vertex map very, very easily. So let's put this down. And so let's say we don't want like this clean look here, because this could be maybe like look too smooth. What we have the option of doing is like layering more on top of this. So what I like to do is in the, the tab here, is use a shader field. So the shader field uh, has the options, yeah, you guessed it, to add shaders. And uh, if we add like a noise shader, we already get, as you can see here, we get some nice like differences in the in the vertex map. So if we go into a shader, we have just like a usual noise. And what we can do is maybe turn this up a bit so we get some more difference here. So now when we take our linear field, we get like a more variance look. But let's say we want this to be like a, like completely changed from one state or one shader to the other. Then what we can do is go in here and as in like Photoshop or After Effects, the blending modes, we have the option to maybe put this to overlay. So as you can see now, we just only get the noise from down here in the button, which is super cool. And in the shader, we can even animate it. So let's just fire this up and click this one. And now as you can see, if I play it down here, it's gonna animate. So we can get some really, really like experimental or uh, like advanced shaders so, because we even have the option in here to add it to a layer. Where is it? Yeah, layer. So we can add multiple noises uh, or gradients on top of each other and blend them 
into each other, which is super cool. All right, so let's let's just disable this one for now, and let's get moving into how we build like a basic shader. So if we're going to create redshift materials and material, so let's open this one up. So I've just right now just put in a basic dome light with a, with like a, a HDR. All right. So let's fire up our Redshift render view, like this. All right, and maybe turn the light a bit up, just so we have something. Let's just add the shader to the sphere so we can get a visual. All right, very cool. So in the shader, we, we want to find the vertex attribute. So as you've probably guessed, this is where the the vertex map is going in. So let's just already add it like this. So now we have the, the vertex map added. And this is not going to be anything crazy. But if we add it here, you can see we already have what we want, basically. Which is super cool and super easy. So this can be used in like a composite tag. So we can composite this and use it as like an alpha mat and then switch between two shaders and blend them together what we want. All right. So what I want to do here is also find a texture and find a noise. Oh no, let's take the Cinema 4D shader. So the smart thing about just using the Cinema 4D shader up here is if we we want like consistency and we have created something crazy in here we could just copy it copy our shader and then put it over here so we wanted like the same thing so we have the same control all right so i'm just going to add like a basic noise and maybe like make it make it a bit smaller for now just maybe like 50 and then turn this a bit up so we get more black all right so let's add the cinema 40 shader into the texture and then let's just add add this into the blend i think so and the vertex map the vertex attribute into our basic our base let's try to add this into the surface let's see so nothing happens right now but we need to change some settings in here. So let's just keep this at composite. But again, in here we have our blending modes as we you know them in Photoshop and After Effects. So we can like scroll through these and see what what like what was sold we like the best. Um, but I'm just gonna go with the hard light for now. So as you can see now, we can change this so so to a, like a nicer result. Just something we want to change. So maybe, because I don't want these up here for now. So maybe actually just go with the the subtract, because that gave us. So as you can see now, we don't have that whole like hard surface here. So in the texture, oh, in the Cinema 4D shader rather, we can crank this up a bit. So I'm gonna crank it up to like 512, 512. So we're gonna get some more smooth. But basically, turning this uh, even up like more, if you want to get like closer, or get some more detail, I would recommend it. All right. So now we want. I'm not gonna, as I said earlier, I'm not gonna be allowed some crazy shader. So I just want something that we can clearly see they're not like the same. So let's just put in like a, a aluminum here, and let's copy this. And let's put in, what do we want to do? Gold. So we have some two different colors here. All right, reflection. Okay, so in here I want to get a material blend so we can blend between these materials. I think what I also want to do is add some bump maybe to one of them or maybe both. Just so we can really see the difference just for now. No, nothing crazy. Some noise. All right, let's just add this one into the surface so we can see what's going on. 
and we have a nice gold shader. All right, then put this into bump and let's add the noise texture and input. All right, so maybe change a couple of things in here, maybe play around with the overall scale so we can get some results. So maybe make this like, I like this. Let's just copy these, mark them and and then uh, hold control and drag. And let's put this in here. Overall bump again. And let's check this out. See how this looks. And let's change the bump so we have some different, let's make this bigger maybe. Yeah, like this. And then turn this up. All right. So now we have two different materials here. So we want one of them to be like basic. So this is going to be the basic, the base material. And then what we want to do is add this into a, a layer color. Okay, so the layer color is, is blending between whatever it's like down under. So let me show you. So if we add in the layer color and then just let's just add this in and then we need our composite tag our whole vertex map set up here uh, in the blend so this is going to blend the the luma like the black and the white values of the the vertex map is going to choose how we're going to blend between these so it didn't add it here yes so now as you can see we have something so if we wanted this to be like opposite maybe we could go into um, let's go into the composite tag here and let's just play around with this because I didn't really like the look I think this may be better okay so I want I want the gold to come from on top so if we go into a linear field and change this direction to minus x minus instead then as you can see now we have this and right now we have like a pretty detailed like uh, the whole map here and as you can see it's blending very nice with the noise it's really giving that extra detail so you can even animate the noise now we can go in into here and then into our cinema 40 shit. This is gonna get the like the whole render view a bit heavier. I don't know why, but it's doing that. So if we change our animation speed up to like 0 0.2. Alright, let's just hide this for now or save this. So I'm not gonna crash and this is lost. Alright. What I also want to do is just for like some fun extra detail here if we go in. As you can see it's already looking pretty nice we have some some pretty pretty detail here so but if we add a displacement which is very cool we can use our, our whole vertex setup here again in the displacement so let's add this one in the text and let's add this into our displacement so nothing is gonna happen right now but that's because we need our tag Open this sphere in redshift tags, redshift object, geometry, and this just add these and down here. Make sure this is marked. And now we should see some displacement. Alright, we definitely are. So let's turn this up to maybe two. So we can really, maybe even more, just to exaggerate the like the whole effect here so now you can see we have some really really cool effects and some really cool lines and we can we have so much control in in the noise here so we can really get some some cool and all by maybe just like trying some of the other things here let's turn this up to a hundred so we can try some of the others this is the one this is super cool this is the uh, one I used on one of my examples I like how we get like these very organic lines and when you animate these they like grow together it just gives like the, a very cool effect 
So this is basically like the whole idea of, of how I created some of these uh, shaders and uh, blended between them and animated them. But what is also very cool, what you can do, I'm just gonna show you quickly. If you don't want this to be like just for animation, let's just delete these quickly. Like this. And let's just delete this one as well. The vertex map. Alright. So let's just add a new one. Just quickly here. Set vertex map 0. And then double click this so we get the paint tool from. So if we wanted to to just it, let's say this was like a like my dinosaur if this was like some of the body and we wanted stripes or something we can like paint these whatever we wanted and of course we could go into go into a, a shader here and then use this vertex map so let's just name this vertex map too just so it, the program doesn't get confused and we can add this into here and hopefully, yep, as you can see, now we have, have these lines. Very, very easy to create, but it, you, it gives you so much control. And you can even add multiple displacement or multiple of these setups in here. All you gotta do is copy like this setup and then add it to like a new layer and then something to blend into that. So you can get all sorts of details without doing the whole UV, <laughs> UV um, setup that I have never done. All right, let I'm just quickly gonna go into the vertex fields here, my my project, so you can see that this is basically the exact same thing. So as you can see, it gives us a pretty detailed, pretty nice uh, shader here. But this is the exact same setup. The only thing here is that the shader is a bit more advanced, but that's basically the same so i hope this created some some like value for you or i hope you can use this for something um yeah bye